okay so now let's discuss about the tools that we need in this uh, course basically first of all I will use uh, visual studio code or VS code in this course to write my code now you are free to use any other text editor like sublime Adam or you can use any IDE if you want but in this course I will use VS code and if you follow along this course I will highly recommend you to install VS code and then you also need to install the postman because uh, if you don't know postman is basically a software that help us to send the uh, request to different endpoints so make sure that you also have postman in your computer installed simply download that and install that and if you are using uh, windows i will highly recommend you to download uh, the uh, git from uh, this website and install that and if you are on mac you can use the built-in terminal of mac also you can use the built-in terminal of windows but i will highly recommend to have git on your computer okay and also you need to download this mongodb community server on your computer because in this course I will use uh, an API that is using Mong MongoDB as database so if you want to use that same API you have to install this MongoDB community server simply go to mongodb.com slash download shares community and download that uh, according to your operating system and install that in your computer and then you will be able to use MongoDB on your computer so you need all these four uh, to uh, get started with this course again you can use any text editor if you want but I will highly recommend you to have Visual Studio code and if you are on Windows and make sure that you also install this git okay so these are all the required tools for this course that's the end of this lecture I will see you in the next video okay so welcome back to this course so from this section we will start writing our unit test and in this section basically we will cover all the basics of Jest and so we are going to use Jest in this course to unit test our application okay so what is Jest so basically Jest is a JavaScript framework that is used for testing and it is maintained by Meta also known as Facebook and there are many other uh, frameworks for unit testing like Mocha and Jasmine but Jest is beginner friendly so that's why we are going to use that and also uh, Jest is built on the top of Jasmine Jasmine is uh, also another popular framework for unit testing in JavaScript okay so we are going to use Jest in this course to unit test or write E2E -E test for our application so this is the official website of Jest which is JestJS.io now throughout this course I will use Jest for the documentation and for the reference so this is the home page of the Jest you can simply go to the docs and here in the documentation you can read more about Jest and different type of functions and different type of concepts in Jest. And also we have here API and we will discuss this API and globals and all these functions throughout this course. Okay. So make sure that you go to jest.js.io and click on docs and here you can see uh, the documentation of Jest. Now in my next video I will install the Jest and write my first unit test. Okay so now let's install Jest and write our first unit test. So first of all I go back to my VS code and here you can see that I have an empty folder with the name Jest Basics. So in this section we will cover all the basics of Jest. Okay. So I will simply uh, create a new terminal here and start my node project here. So I will type here npm init dash y to create my package.json file here. And now let's first of all install the Jest. So now Jest is a, a testing framework so we have to install it as a dev dependency. So I simply type here npm i Jest dash dash save and dash dev to install it as a dev dependency okay so just is installed successfully if I go back to my package and file you can see that here just is installed successfully and let's install one more package if I go back you can see that we have here the types slash just is a very popular package so it will basically help us to maintain the types of just or to get recommendations in our VS code so I simply also install it so I copy that from here then I go back and put it here and we have to install it as a dev dependency also so type here dash dev and let's install this one also so the package is installed successfully now let's create our terminal and now let's create our first unit test I simply uh, close this file from here and create a new folder here that is underscore underscore tests underscore underscore so we will put all our tests in this folder okay now here first of all I create a new file so I simply type here like basics dot test dot js now you can either type test.js or you can type spec.js just will automatically detect that this is a testing file so either you can use test.js or spec.js so let's put it here spec.js and I will use spec.js throughout this course okay so this is our testing file so now let's write here our first unit test I will simply type here test okay 
Now in the test, first of all, I have to type the name of the test. For example, I type here like addition. Okay. Then I will pass here a callback function. Okay. And in that, I can write my test. Now in here, I will, if I go back to my Chrome, let's close this one. And if I uh, click here, use matchers, you can see that uh, just uses matchers to let you test values in different ways. So we will use different type of matchers throughout this course. And also you can see that here in the example that expect 2 plus 2 dot 2 before. Okay. So we will use expect and then 2b which is the matcher. So if I go back to my VS code and let's type here expect. Like we are expecting that 2 plus 2 dot 2b. Now there are different matchers like 2b to be called with and we will use different type of matchers throughout this course. Okay. So we can expect that 2 plus 2 to be 4. Okay. If I save this. So now we have to run this test. So I simply go to my package or JSON file. And then I type here a new script which is uh, test. I simply remove it from here, this line, and type here just. Okay. So now if I type here npm run test, you can see that here just will run it. And you can see that here our one test is passing which is the addition. Okay. So 2 plus 2 to be 4. If I type here 3, now the test will fail because 2 plus 2 is not 3. If I run npm run test again, you can see that the test is failing. It is saying that that uh, we have expected 3 you can see that here we are expecting that it is 3 but we will receive 4 because 2 plus 2 is 4 so that's why the test fails because we are expecting the wrong value if i type here 4 again save it now if i run my test you can see that our test is passing successfully so in this way we can write our first unit test simply we have to write here test okay in the test first of all we have to type the name of the test and then the call black function in that we can write our code for that uh, basically test okay now let's write some more unit tests. For example, I type here test and let's type here uh, null. Okay. Now I can simply type here that const. Um, let's type here i is equal to null. Okay. Then I simply type here that expect i dot to be null. Okay. If I simply save this one and let's actually go back to our package and file and let's type here dash dash watch all. So now with this flag, we don't have to actually restart our test again and again with npn on test. It will automatically uh, restart it. If I simply save this one, now if I type here npm run test, and you can see that it is running in the watch mode and our test, both tests are passing successfully. Now if I type here a second test, expect i dot to be defined. And if I press uh, command s, you can see that the test is passing here successfully. Okay. Now we have one more uh, matcher that is assertions. If I type here expect, okay, dot assertions, in that I can pass here a number. For example, if I type here two, now it will make sure that we have two assertions in this test. Now what is the assertion? Now this is one assertion and this is the second assertions. You can also say that number of expect in a test. If I press here command s, you can see that the test is passing. Now if I type here three, if I press command s, you can see that we get here error expected three assertions but received two assertions calls okay so we have two assertions here so in this way you can also verify that how many assertions are being called so this is also uh, very useful in some cases if i type here two the error will go back okay so in this way we can write our unit test now let's take another example i type here like a uh, const animals okay let's get an array here I type here cat and i type here dog okay now let's write a unit test for this. I simply type here test. Then I type here uh, animal array. Then I pass here the callback function. In that I will simply type here that expect. What we are expecting that the animal animals array dot to contain. Now to contain will help us to look into the array. Now to contain. Now we are expecting it to be cat. Okay, if I press command S, you can see that our test is passing successfully. But if I expecting here cats, simply save this one, you can see that we get here the test fails because we don't have cats in this array. So in this way, you can also verify any value in the uh, array basically. Okay, you can also test one more thing here that expect animals dot to be instance of an array. Okay, so we are expecting that this animal is an instance of an array. In this case, it is an instance of array. If I press command S, you can see that the test is passing. So in this way, we can also test our uh, arrays. So now let's write one more unit as for the exceptions. If, for example, if I type here a function, get data, okay, and it will simply return or throw new error. I type here 
not found like this okay so this function is basically throwing an error which is not found now let's test this function now I simply type here a test block test get data then I type here a callback function and I can simply type here expect the get data dot to throw okay now it will throw the error so I type here also the error message this is optional if I press here command as you can see that the test is passing that we are expecting that the get data will throw something or some error you can also pass here a message for example if I type here not found I can pass that in here simply save it the test is passing again if I simply type here dot save it you can see that the test is failing because dot is not present here okay so this way you can also uh, basically expect or test the exceptions and we will definitely do all this uh, in our upcoming videos so this is the basics of so that's it for this video we have discussed about the basic unit test like this we have talked about the assertions okay then we have talked about how we can test an array and how we can test uh, basically error like this okay so in my next video I will talk about mocks okay so let's discuss about mocks or mocking in this video now in unit testing mocking is a really important concept and we, we do a lot of mocking in unit test basically okay so in simple words mocking is like creating objects that simulate the behavior of the real objects in simple words we write the fake implementation of different objects or the functions okay now for example uh, we will use mock function throughout this course for example we have a mongoose function that is find now what is find find is a function of mongoose that give us an array of all the documents in that particular collection okay now in unit test we don't actually call the real database because that's that is against the rule of unit testing in, in unit testing we don't call any database or any third party dependencies okay so what we will do we will simply mock the find function now how we can mock the find function we will simply give the fake implementation of that function for example in in, in, in real scenario the find will return us array of all the documents in that particular collection so we will erase that uh, real implementation and give a fake implementation uh, of that function so that we don't have to actually call the database that is called mocking in simple words we also write the fake implementation of that function okay so let's understand mocking with the help of an example okay so you can read more about mock functions on the JS documentation right here okay now you can see that here I have an app.js file okay so that is basically importing the crypto which is the built-in package and here I have an async function get data that will basically give us some random bytes so crypto.random bytes will give us random bytes when I type here 20 that it will give me 20 random bytes and then I am simply calling this uh, get data here and exporting that as well okay now let's run this uh, uh, so that you can basically check what is the result of that I can simply type here console.log and I can simply actually put that here to show you what is the result of that simply save this one and now if I just type here node app.js you can see that here we get here 20 bytes okay so in this way the random uh, crypto random bytes work okay so now here crypto is a third party dependency and, and in unit test we don't call any database or any third party dependency so that is the rule of unit testing we don't have to actually call the third party dependencies or database so how we can unit test this function okay we know that in unit test we basically test small pieces of code like a function or a component so now let's write unit test for this function I simply go to my underscore underscore test file and get a new file here that is called app dot spec dot js so first of all we have to uh, actually import the get data so I type here get data I will require that from um, app okay and then I will simply type here my first test so test we will test here the fetch data function okay pass in here the callback and now we have to actually test this uh, function so now again what this function do is this function will simply return us uh, 20 random bytes with this crypto package okay so now if I type here like um, const res is equal to await because it's an async function so I type here await get data okay and let's type here async also because we have to use here await and now if I simply log here uh, res so let's save this one and if I type here and also let me actually move this terminal to the right side so you can see it easily okay so simply type here npm run test and it will run test of both files now I have to only run the test of this file so I simply type here um, p to filter out the files so p then my file name is app.spec.js so now it will run only test of this file now you can see that in the console.log we are getting here the buffer like this now it is actually calling that function and it will basically 
uh, call this function and return us the random bytes but we don't want to do that because in unit testing we don't actually call the third party dependencies we actually mock them we give them fake implementation so so what we will do is we will simply mock this random bytes function and give our own implementation fake implementation okay so let's see how we can do that i simply go back to my app.spec.js okay then i will simply type here just which is the global variable that just give us so just dot mock now the mock we have to pass the name of the module that we want to mock in this case what is the module the module is the crypto so type here crypto and because we know that we have here crypto so we are going to mock this crypto uh, module now we have to also give the fake implementation of this uh, random bytes so what i do is i simply type here crypto and before that i have also i also have to import the crypto actually so i simply copy that from here and i import that okay so i simply type here that crypto dot random bytes okay now we can give the fake implementation of this uh, function so what we are expecting from the random bytes we are expecting that the random bytes will return us some bytes mock resolved value ones and i type here like bytes okay so if i simply save this one you can see that we get here bytes now we are not getting here the actual uh, bytes that this actually function give us so again we are mocking the function we are giving the fake implementation of that function we will simply use just.mock to mock this entire crypto uh, module and then we have to give the fake implementation of this uh, function that we are using that is random bytes now we are using here the mock resolved value ones now what is this function if i go back to documentation now you can see that here we have mock resolved value ones in that we will in that we possibly pass the value so this is the short form for this code now let's understand this code so first of all what is just.fn so whenever to, you type here just.fn just will automatically create an empty uh, mock function okay remember that just.fn will create an empty mock function and then we can give the implementation of that function so to give the implementation we use mock implementation or mock implementation once now for example if you use here mock implementation once in that we can simply uh, basically return a promise uh, promise dot resolve the value so this is the short form of this okay now if you write if you want to write the code in this way you can also write that for example if i type i simply go back i can simply uh, copy this line comment out this one uh, let's type here dot mock implementation once okay now in that i will simply type here promise dot resolve in that i will pass here bytes simply save this one now you can see that we get here the same results if i type here double s you can see that we get here double s so in the same way in this way we can give the fake implementation of a function we can use the mock implementation once and then we can define the implementation in that function in this case we are simply using promise dot resolve to give a resolved value because this function also returns a promise so that's why we have to use here promise dot resolve and we will pass here the value in that and if you don't want to use that you can simply use here mock resolved value that is the short form of this okay so in this way we can mock that again simply use here just dot mock and type the name of the module then give the mock implementation or you can also use here mock resolved value once now we have two functions that is mock resolved value and then and second is mock resolved value once in the same way we have the mock implementation and then the mock implementation once and we will understand the difference between them in the next video okay so i hope that you understand in my next video i will first of all discuss about the mock difference between the mock implementation and then the mock implementation once okay so i will see you in the next lecture okay so welcome back to this course so before moving on let's discuss about the mock implementation and then the mock implementation once in our previous video we have discussed about the mocks so you can see that here we have used the mock implementation once and now there is one more function that is called mock implementation only okay so we have to understand the difference between these two functions okay and the same way we have the mock resolved value once and then the mock resolved value so let's understand what are the differences between uh, a mock implementation and the mock implementation once so I simply close this one now I have here one uh, new file that is mock imp.spec.js that is mock implementation.spec.js now let's write our test so first of all I type here test I type here mock implementation okay so this is my first test now in that I will simply create a mock function so I type here mock fn is equal to now we know that whenever we want to create uh, a mock function with jest we simply use here jest dot fn okay so it will create a mock function okay now 
uh, let's give the implementation so I uh, simply type in here that it by default will return this string that is default okay now if I simply type here const uh, res1 is equal to mock f and I will call this function and now let's console dot log the value of res1 okay simply save this one and now if I type here npm run test and I will call this file only I simply type here p and that is mock inf dot spec dot js okay so you can see that we're getting here default which is the default implementation now let's call the mock implementation and override uh, the implementation so I will simply type here dot mock sorry that is mock implementation so in the mock implementation I will simply uh, return here uh, another string that is first call like this simply save this one and now you can see that here now we are getting here the first call instead of default because we have given the mock implementation of this first call if I create one more uh, here instance of this function now you can see that here we are getting first call two times because we have called this function two times okay now again if I simply give one more uh, implementation like dot mock implementation we can change that now let's type here um, let's return here second call simply save this one and you can see that here we are getting second call both times this means that it is replacing both uh, the implementations uh, which is the default and the first call we are getting here second call and also second call now let's write a unit test for the mock implementation once and let's understand the difference um, let's copy this entire test from here I will put that here type here mock implementation once and I will also type here once and also type here once okay now let's comment out this one first of all and now if I simply let's comment out also these ones simply save this one now you can see that here um, we are getting here first of all um, let's comment out this part also you can see that here we are getting these console.logs from here first of all we get here the first call and then we get here the default okay you can see that here we call this mock function two times first time we get here the first call and second time we get here the default this means that whenever we, we use mock implementation once it only give the implementation once to the first call of that function okay you can see that here we called this function first time we get here the first call which is the uh, this implementation and for the second time when we have called this function for the second time we don't get here the first call we got the default because it will work only once okay but in this case it will give uh, a first call every time but if we give second implementation like this it will give second call all the times in the same way if I simply uncomment this one now if I press uh, here command s you can see that here we are getting first call and then the second call okay so for the first call of this function it is uh, giving the implementation and giving this value which is the first call and then we have called the mock f and second time it give us the second call okay now let's call it third time like this and let's see the value three like this and you can see that here again we get here default for the third time because we have given only two implementation ones in this case okay so this is the main difference between the mock implementation and the mock implementation ones I hope that you understand let me explain it once again in mock implementation if you give the mock implementation the previous impl implementation will be overridden entirely but when we use mock implementation once it only uh, uh, basically give the implementation for the first call okay and after that it will uh, give the default call like this okay so in the same way we have the mock resolve value and the mock resolve value once when you use once in front of that function it will only be valid for the first call or for the one call only okay so this is the basic difference between the mock implementation and then the mock implementation once I hope that you understand in my next video I will talk about the spy on okay so welcome back so in this video we will discuss about the jest.spyon 
so you can see that here the de definition is that creates a mock function okay similar to just.fn which is the blank mock function but also track the call to the object or the method name now just.spion is just like the mock for example if i go back we have here um, this just.mock we are mocking this entire module and then we are giving the fake implementation of this function which is random bytes now we can also do the same with the uh, spion so the spion basically we have to type here two things first of all the name of the object in this case the name of the module for example in this case th that is the crypto okay and then the method name that we want to spy on or we want to give the fake implementation of in that case we want to spy on the crypto and the method name is the random bytes so we will spy on onto this object or this module and then we will only mock this particular method but in the case of um, jazz.mock it is mocking the entire module okay so this is the basic difference here jazz.mock will mock the entire module but the jazz.spion will only spy on or mock this particular method which is the random bytes okay so that, let's see how we can use jazz.spion to get the same fake implementation like this okay now i simply comment out this one and also i will comment out this this one because now i will use jazz.spion simply save this one and now if i type here just dot spy on okay now i have to type here the name of the object so in this case that is the crypto so i want to spy on onto the crypto and then i have to pass here the method name so the method name is the random bytes okay then i have to give the fake implementation or the mock implementation now let's use here dot mock resolved value once i have i have already discussed about the mock implementation and the mock implementation once in my previous video okay so mock uh, resolved value once is similar to this okay that will return a promise with that value i type here bytes okay so it will basically return a promise with this bytes value simply save this one now let's run the test so npm run test okay so i will simply type here t to filter out the app dot spec dot js okay so we got here bytes uh, with this just or spy on okay so in this way we can spy on on different modules and can mock a particular method and we will use this spy on throughout this course okay you can also write here assertion like expect res dot to be bytes like this one okay so this is the just or spy on i hope that you understand if you have any question in mind you can definitely ask me a question i am always here to help you okay so that's the end of this video in my next video i will discuss about the um a describe and it block okay so welcome back to this course so in this short video let's discuss about the describe and it block okay so you can see that here in the describe blocks creates a block that groups together several related tests for example we have uh, multiple test and we can group those test with the help of this describe uh, basically function let's see how we can use this uh, this describe uh, to manage the group of test if i go back to my vs code you can see that here you have a new file that is describe underscore it dot spec dot js now for example if i type here describe okay in the describe i can simply type here the name of the uh, describe block for example let's call this describe auth, auth like i want to write uh, the test for this auth module okay then i will pass here an empty function or empty callback function okay now i can simply write here multiple unit tests for example i can type here test one okay let's call it test one okay in the same way i will write here test two so to save this one now if i type here and we have done test and let's filter out this file that is describe underscore it dot spec dot js you can see that here under the auth we have test one and test two for this auth module okay in the same way you can describe one more block like this for the for example let's call it product products okay so now the products block will have all the test for the product so in this way we can basically group all the related tests together 
okay so test one test two now you can also use here it instead of test okay so you can see that it will basically create a test layer and we just have to type here the name of the test and then the uh, uh, implementation of that test so it will make more sense like you can simply type here that it should register a user it should throw the error so we can use here it instead of test and I will use it throughout this course in 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 instead of this test okay if I simply save this one you can see that here we get the same result so in this way we can use the describe and the it block and again I will use it instead of test throughout this course so that's the end of this video I will see you in the next lecture okay so welcome back to this course so in this last video of this section I will discuss about uh, before each after each before all and after all okay so let's understand what are these functions so if I go back to my Chrome you can see that here I have this before all which is a which is part of globals API okay so that will basically is just a function that will run before all the tests okay let me show you how it will work so I simply go back to my VS code and let's type here the before all I type here before all and pass in the function that will run before all the tests I simply type here console dot log and type here before all if I simply save this one you can see that the before all is called before every test in the same way we have the after all I simply copy it from here we have here after all simply save this one and you can see that uh, this after all will be called after each uh, after all the tests okay so this is uh, before all and after all in the same way we have before each and after each okay for example if I copy this one let's type here before each okay I will simply put that here simply save it and now you can see that here before each is called four times because we have four unit test here one two three and four so one two three and four so before each will be called a uh, before each test okay in the same way we have the uh, before oh uh, sorry after each so after each will be called after each test so you can see that here we get here before all first of all that will run before all the test then we have four unit test one two three and four so we get here before each after each before each after each in the same we have four times and at the end we have here after all which will run after all the test so these are really useful uh, functions or globals that we can use in unit testing for example uh, in uh, e to e testing we will use this before all to connect to database which is definitely a dummy database and we will use this after all to disconnect from that database okay so in the same way we can write different uh, functionalities in these functions depending upon the uh, situation so these are the four useful functions or globals that we can use and we will definitely use that in our upcoming videos i hope that you understand so that's the end of this section i hope that you understand the basics of jest and we will continue to learn new uh, concepts or new functions of just in our upcoming videos and also you can find this entire folder which is just basics in the resource of this video which is the last video of this section okay so if you want to get this same code you can uh, simply go to the resource of this video that you are watching and you can download this project okay so I will see you in the next section okay so welcome back to this course so let's uh, you know test our jobs API in from this section okay so to get the initial uh, API you can simply go to my github profile that is github.com gulamabas2 slash jobs API jobs dash API dash unit dash testing and you can see that here I have the first branch which is the initial jobs API you can simply clone that okay so simply copy uh, uh, from here then I go back to my terminal I am in my lectures file I simply type here git clone and paste that link here and press enter now it will clone the jobs uh, API unit testing in my lectures fi uh, lecture files folder okay so let me so let me open that with the VS code so you can see that here I have the initial uh, jobs API so I simply uh, click on new terminal and type here npm run 
dev to start my server and you can see that here I have to basically type here npm i to install all the packages first of all so type here npm i so all packages are installed successfully now if I type here npm run dev you can see that server is started on in 3000 in development mode you can see that here so the server is started and in my package or JSON file I have here the dev script that will run node mode server or JS okay so and my database is also connected to the local host so let me give you the overview of this API first of all so this is the starting point of this server or JS first of all I will import my app.js which is right here in which I have written some basic configuration like express.json imported my config.env file in which I have my database connection string my AWS S3 API keys and node miller API keys to send the email in the same way I have all the um, config uh, variables in my config.env file which is present right here okay and then I have used a cookie parser file upload because I will upload images to the AWS S3 and then I have here my uh, routes you can see that in the routes folder I have here auth routes and jobs routes okay so I have simply imported those here okay then I will use that and by default every endpoint will start with API slash v1 so localhost port 3000 which is this one then slash API slash v1 then slash the name of the route for example register login upload image email or like that okay and then I have type here that if uh, we if user pass here invalid uh, route that is not handled by these tools then we will simply throw an error with the 404 status code and the error is route not found then we will simply export the app from here in the server.js and then we will simply connect to our database and then start our server now the connect database is present here in the config so database.js in that I will simply uh, use my mongoose mongoose.connect pass in here my uh, connection string then it will start the uh, basically connect to the database okay and if I close these I can simply go here now in the controllers I have two controllers auth controller and the jobs controller in the auth controller I have first of all the register user that will register the user and save that in the database with the encrypted password like this and also we will get back our JWT token from the user in the same way we have the login user in which we will validate the email and the password match that in the database then we will uh, give back the token to the user which is JWT token okay in the same way we have the upload image and the send email to the user that we will also test okay and then in the jobs controller I have simply get jobs and that will give, basically give us all the jobs we can apply the pagination and we can also search in the title of the job okay and after that we have here new job that will basically create a new job in the database we have here get job to get a single job update a job and delete job so these are the job controllers and after that we have here the middleware I have only one middleware that is auth.js so this will basically authenticate the user uh, for the protected routes so we will simply get the uh, bearer token from the authorization header and if the headers are missing we will simply throw the missing authorization header then if um, the better token is present then we will get that token and then we will validate that token and then we will validate the user okay so this is the authentication middle where we will also test the, uh, that in this video in this course basically okay now I have used that on the protected routes like this for example if I want only authenticated users to create a new job I can simply type here router route, route and the slash job slash new dot post then I type here is authenticated user that first of all make sure that the user is authenticated and if it's not authenticated then we will throw this error authentication failed otherwise we will simply call this new job controller that will create a job and save that in the database okay so this is the auth middleware and after the middlewares we have here models we have two models job model and user model now in the user model we have simply name email and password of the user okay so these are all required fields okay then in the uh, jobs model we basically have here the title of the job description email address company industry like this then the positions salary and all those fields and also we will save the user uh, in the document okay so this is the job model and after the models we have here the routes again we have here auth routes which are 
register login upload image email and then we have here the uh, job routes basically okay and after the routes we have here utils folder so in in, in the utils i have helpers.js in which i have uh, basically two functions first of all the send email that will send email using node mailer and then we have here the get jwt token that will give us the token uh, on uh, successful authentication okay and then i have here s3 service.js which is a class so that will basically upload our image to the uh, s3 bucket so we will also test these functions and also i will test this file uh, class uh, in this course so i will try to basically give the example of each and every type of unit test like a function testing a function testing a class model middleware or controller function okay so this is the overview of the api that we're going to uh, test basically and i will also explain this api throughout this course uh, before testing now if you go to my postman i can simply uh, hit my endpoint like localhost port 3000 slash api slash v1 slash jobs if i click on send you can see that here i'm getting all my jobs here okay so you can simply go to this link clone this uh, initial jobs api and then in the next video we will write our first unit test okay so welcome back to this course so now let's unit test our jobs api so in this video first of all we will start from the here from the auth um controller so i simply create a new file that is auth controller okay then spec.js or you can type here dot test.js okay you can also put uh, this file in underscore underscore test folder but i will put all the testing file with this, uh, with the main file like this okay and actually before starting that we have to also install the jest so i will simply install here npm i jest i will also install here at types slash jest dash dash save dash dev so the uh, packages are installed successfully now i can simply um, let's first of all create a jest.config.js file uh, so that we can write up a configuration if we want to change anything we can simply change that in the jest.config.js and to create jest.config.js we have to type here jest dash dash in it okay now it will throw that command not found jest so either we can install the jest globally or we can simply type here node modules because in the node modules we have here the jest sorry dot bin in dot bin we have here jest now we can use this jest also to create that file so i simply type here uh, node modules dash slash dot bin then slash jest then dash dash in it okay now would you like to use jest uh, while running test scripts in package.json file uh, let's type here um no no node and i type here no for now v8 and i type here no and now the uh, jest.config.file is created successfully here you can see that okay i simply uh, close this one and now i can simply go to my package or json file let's type here script which is the test and i type here jest dash dash watch all so we don't have to restart the server again and again uh, simply close this one and now if i type here test hello okay now let's actually test that our files are working properly simply save this one and if i type here npm run test you can see that here our test is passing successfully right here so now before moving on let's go to these uh, jest.com.mjs file and here first of all you can see that we have uh, a lot of code so what i do is i search for here coverage path uh, coverage path ignore uh, pattern so i'll comment this code so that will basically skip uh, and this folder for the testing and then i simply also have to um, type here test match so i will comment this one now it will check all the files in the underscore record test or also with these extension with this dot js dot 
with dot spec dot js with dot test dot js or if you are using typescript then it will be uh, dot spec dot ts or dot test dot ts okay and then also i will uncomment this one simply save this one and now let's close this file and now we are good to go and let's write our first unit test here now here we basically have to test the controller functions so if i open this from here let's actually move this terminal to the right here okay so you can see that first of all we have here the register user function in that we have to pass here request and the response okay we know we know that when we're using node and express we get here access to the request object and the response object so we also have to actually mock these and then we have to move on so in this video let's first of all mock the request and the response okay so you open uh, open this file i simply first of all uh, let's import here first of all the register user from um, dot dot slash or dot slash auth controller okay so that is register user okay and then i will simply first of all type here describe block and describe we know that we use describe to uh, gather all the um, same test so I'll simply type here register user okay and then I will simply pass here callback and in that I have to write here my first unit test that is it should um, register user okay and that is going to be async because you have to use await in that okay now we know that we have to call here await register user like this but we know that we have to pass here request and the response object and we have to actually mock them we have to uh, write here the fake request and the response okay so right now i will comment this one I go back now what we need here from the request within here request dot body okay so on the body we need name email and password so what we will do is we will create a mock uh, request and pass a body in that and that body will contain name email and password so i simply go back let's here on the top if i type here const mock request like this and that is actually a function that will return an object so i simply return from here the body because we know that we need request dot body and the body we need here name for example I type here test user then I type here email let's type here test at gmail dot com then I type here password okay so this is our mock request the mock request we only need here at this point body that contains name email and password okay in the same way we need here response so we are using a response right here uh, to set the status code and to set the json and in that case we are passing the token in the json so we also have to uh, make a, uh, a fake response object so for that i will simply again type here const mock response okay is equal to that will basically return here two things first of all the status and then the json now in this case both status and json are functions so now you can also see that uh, this is function chaining we are using res dot status dot json now here we not only have to mock this function but we also have to take care of this function chaining okay so for that i will simply use here first of all the uh, status now that is a function so i will use here js.fn to create an empty uh, mock function in the same way i have here the json okay i will type here just.fn okay now if we use this mock response here it will throw the error because here we are using the function chaining dot status and then dot json now to solve this issue we have to use here mock return this if i go up to my uh, chrome you can see that here 
just has a function that is mock return this so this is actually short value for this jest.fn function then it will return this now this function will actually help us uh, to make functions chainable okay so i simply go back and let's use here dot mock return this okay now it will take care all the uh, chaining it will not throw any error okay so now we have successfully created here the mock request that contains body the name email and password then the mock response that in that we have to actually manage two things two functions status and the json and we know that we are using these functions uh, with chaining so we have to use here mock return this to get rid of that okay so now we have here mock request and mock response and now we can pass those in our register user okay and we also have here one more error that is cannot read use import statement outside a module so actually we have to uh, create here a dot babel rc file i will use here new file dot babel rc uh, sorry that is okay and that we simply have to pass here presets okay and that i have to pass here um actually also i have to install here npm i then babel dash preset dash env dash dash save dash dev install that as dev dependency and you also have to pass that in here simply save this one now if i type here npm run test and now you can see that the test is passing successfully now this uh, babel uh, dash preset uh, env is very smart preset or package that basically allow us to use the latest javascript here okay so make sure that you install this package as dev dependency and create a dot babel rc file and use uh, this code in that okay okay so that's it for this video in, in this video i have successfully created my mock request and the mock response in my next video i will mock uh, my hash and create function okay so i will see you in the next lecture okay so welcome back to this course so in our previous video i have successfully uh, created my mock request and mock response and now in this video let's mock all the dependencies of this register user function okay so you can see that here first of all we have here uh, this dependency that is bgrip.hash that is hashing the password so we have to mock this hash function and then here we have the user.create which is the mongoose function that will create the user and save that in the database so we also have to mock this one because this is also a dependency and in the same way we also have here get jwt token that is also a dependency okay again you have to keep in mind that in unit testing we don't call any third party dependency and also we don't send any real request to the database okay we have to mock all these dependencies all right so in this video let's mock all these three functions so i will simply go to my auth controller.spec.js and here mock this uh, hash so i will type here just dot spy on so i have to spy on onto bcrypt okay so i have to also actually import that so i will import here bcrypt from bcrypt.js and also i will import my user model so from the uh, dot slash models slash users okay now let's type here bcrypt then we have to mock the hash function okay so we give the mock um resolved value once we have our, we have already used this function before that will basically return this value for example i type here hashed password okay so now this function uh, will return the hash password instead of calling uh, this actual hash function so we have successfully mocked this bcrypt hash function now we have to mock the user.create and for that i we have already imported my user here so i will simply type here just dot spy on and we have to spy on onto the user and we have to spy on onto the create function okay 
and we have to give here the mock resolved value of this so mock resolved value once and that I have to pass the value now the create uh, basically function or method will give us back the name email password and the ID of that document that is created okay so we have to simply type here that and for that what I do is I actually create here a mock user so const mock user that will contain this name email and password okay actually that is going to be hash password because now uh, it is the hash password okay and then we also have to type here the ID I type here underscore ID of that user and then for the ID I will simply use here this user ID okay and I put that here so whenever we will create so when we create our user uh, the create will give us the name of that user email and then the hashed password and then the ID of that user that is assigned okay so we have to type here mock user so now this user dot create will uh, return this value which is this mock user okay and now we have successfully mocked our second dependency which is the create now at last we have this get jw token that is also a dependency so if I open this here you can see that it is actually uh, using this JWT dot sign to sign a token or to create a new JWT token okay so now let's actually mock this one and we know that we can also use just or spy on now also we can use and uh, mock on entire module how we can do that we can simply type here just dot mock and we can simply mock on dot dot slash utils slash helpers okay and I can simply pass in here uh, the get JWT token and I will type here just dot f and that will simply return here fake JWT token okay and actually you have to wrap like this so that it immediately return the value okay now know that we can simply mock uh, the entire module by passing the name of the module here in this case uh, we have a type here the path which is dot dot slash utils slash helpers okay in the helpers if I go to here you can see that we have the uh, get JWT token so we are simply uh, mocking the get JWT token that will basically return uh, this empty uh, this uh, sorry just JWT token string okay now we have also mocked this uh, last dependency which is the get jw token now in my next video i will actually send the request pass the request and the response and let's see if the test pass okay so i will see you in the next lecture okay so welcome back to this course so in my previous video i have successfully mocked all three dependencies of this uh, register user function which is the hash create and the get jw token function okay so now let's call this register user and see if it works so first of all i need to pass here the request and the response so i will simply type here uh, const mock request it is going to be mock request i will call that um, function that will give me back that object and the same way i have the mock response that is mock response okay let me console.log these values so you know what are these actually so I will simply type here mock request and then the mock response simply save this one and uh, now you can see that here we get here uh, for the body uh, sorry for the mock request we get here the body then body contains name email and the password and then for the mock response it contains the mock status function and then the JSON function okay so these are the mock request and response all right so now oops I will simply remove this from here let's actually call this function I have to pass in here the mock request oops that is mock uh, simply copy that from here put that here then I have here mock response okay and now it will call this function and now before actually expecting here or writing our assertions let's check these values first of all what we get back for example if I type here 
console dot log password in the original function we get here password if I simply save this one you can see that here we are getting here hashed password so this means that our hash function is mocked successfully it is giving us this fake hash password string right here okay in the same way let's test the second one I simply type here this user and if I press command as you can see that here we are getting here our test user email password and the ID okay so this means that this create is also mocked successfully now let's test our third dependency that is with token so I simply copy that from here save and um, you can see that here we are getting here JWT token instead of the original token okay so this means that our all three dependencies are mocked successfully I simply remove this console from here now let's uh, write our assertions so I simply type here that expect mock response dot status dot to have been called with okay with 200 because we are here we are setting 200 oh sorry that is 201 not 200 okay so we are typing here that uh, we are setting here the status code 201 user is registered successfully and passing the token in the JSON function okay so we are expecting that the mock response dot status to have been called with 201 if I simply press command as you can see that uh, the test is passing if I type here 200 and now you can see that the test is failing because we are, we are have expected here 200 but actually we have received 201 because we have type here 201 in, in the original function so this means that the user is created successfully okay so this is our first assertions let's actually also type here second assertion that expect the bcrypt dot hash dot to have been called with one two three four five six seven eight and then pass here the value of the salt which is 10 by default you can see that here we also have to pass in here the password and then the 10 okay simply save this one and you can see that the test is passing successfully because bcrypt.hash is called with this password and this salt value if i type here 9 the test will definitely fail because we have to pass in here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 because this is called with uh, this password okay now let's write one more assertion here we can expect the user dot create dot to have been called with uh, this this part save this one and you can see that the test will fail because here we have a pipe here hash password because as at this point the password contain the hashed value so we have to type here hashed password like this okay so now the test will pass successfully so we have written here three assertions so this means that our registered user is successfully encrypting the password saving that user in the database generating a token and then giving back the response with 201 calling the bcrypt.hash with our correct password and also the user.create is successfully called with our uh, request.body which we have passed uh, on the top so in my next video i will talk about the store all mocks okay so i will see you in the next lecture okay so i'll come back to this course now before writing our other unit test let's talk about the restore all mocks so we know that we are simply mocking the um, user model and we have also mocked the uh, bcrypt hash function so actually we also have to restore all the mocks you can see that here we have a very useful function that is restore all mocks so it will basically restore all the mocks back to their original value because we know that we are giving the fake implementation of those functions so we also have to restore back uh, their original value okay now you have to keep in mind that the just dot uh, restore all mocks will only work with the just dot spy on 
So the restore all mocks will work only with the mocks that are created with jest.spy on. Okay. So we have to restore back their original values. Now to use that, I simply go back to my VS Code and here, uh, before I describe, I type here after each. Okay, we know that after each is called after each test. So I simply type here that it will restore uh, the spy created with spy on. Spy mean that. Uh, we have mocked that particular function so we will simply use here just dot restore all mocks so it will basically restore uh, the original values of these functions back after each test okay so make sure that you write this here and the test will pass successfully okay so it can create issues in the future so that's the end of this video in my next video i will write my second unit test in which we will handle other cases like this duplicate email or these uh, or this error okay so i will discuss that in my next video okay so welcome back to this course so in the previous video we have successfully written our first unit test uh, in which it is basically uh, mocking all the dependencies and then we are expecting that the user is registered successfully now we have two failed cases here first of all that user hasn't entered any name email or password and also if user has entered any duplicate email okay so in this video let's handle this case that if user doesn't pass uh, the name or email or the password then we have to throw the error and have to make sure that we get the error okay so for that i will simply um, type here another it block that it should throw validation error okay then I simply have to pa pass in here the mock response and uh, like all like this I simply copy that from here okay so now um, in the mock response by default uh, here we have name email and the password now we have to pass here the empty body so that it throw the uh, uh, this validation error so for that I will simply type here that uh, mock request then I will simply set here um, dot body okay and then the dot body I will type is equal to body then it will pass the empty body uh, in, in the mock request okay and now if I also log here the mock request simply save this one and you will see that we get here empty body okay so now let's expect the mock res dot status dot to have been called with uh, this status code which is the 400 bad request okay for example if I type here 200 simply save this one and now you can see that the test failed because we have received 400 which is this one okay so I simply type here 400 okay then we can expect also this error message okay so I will simply actually copy this from here then I will simply type here that expect the mock response dot json dot to have been called with this error that please enter all values if I simply save it the test is passing if I type here a name like this the test will fail uh, because we have passed here uh, wrong uh, error okay so now we have successfully validated that if user doesn't pass anything in the body or doesn't pass name email or password it will throw the uh, validation error with this 400 uh, status code and this error message okay so that's it for this video in my next video I will handle this uh, duplicate email entered error okay so welcome back to this course so now in this video let's handle this case in which user will enter the duplicate email so when user will enter the duplicate email the error code is going to be 11,000 okay so if the error code is going to be 11,000 then it will be a, a duplicate key error so this is a mongoose error basically okay so then it will throw the duplicate email enter okay and uh, let's write the unit test for this one so I simply go back and 
let's define here one more it block that it should throw duplicate email entered error okay that is going to be async function uh, sorry callback function and then that first of all I have to spy on because uh, it will pass this then we have to actually uh, mock uh, this first of all so I simply actually use this one that it will um, to mock this hash password so we don't have to actually call this uh, dependency and then it will throw the error so we will uh, mock this create function and it will throw the duplicate uh, uh, error so for that I simply type here just dot spy on I will spy on onto the user now the create will uh, throw that error so I will use here mock rejected value so mock rejected value so basically in, in this um, like we have mock resolved value we have the mock rejected value so in that case the mock uh, the promise will be rejected with that particular value okay so mock rejected value once and the value is going to be code that is the 11,000 basically okay so the promise will be rejected uh, this 11,000 code so it will go there and then we, we will get this error all right and now we have successfully mocked this one we can simply uh, copy this from here I can simply type here and now I don't have to actually pass here empty body I have to pass here the actual body in the uh, request and now if I simply write here expect uh, this part because you have to expect here 400 status code which is this one and then the error is this duplicate email enter I simply copy it from here save this one and the test will fail because we get here uh, we have received duplicate email instead of this so you have to actually type here this one okay simply save this one and now the test will pass so you can see that our all three tests are passing for the register user so we have successfully written all the test cases for this register user in my next video i will write the unit test for this uh, login user okay so i will see you in the next lecture okay so welcome back to this course so in our previous video we have successfully uh, tested our register user all the all three cases and now in this uh, video i will test my login user so in the login user we have basically one test for this uh, error then second test for this error then third test for this error and then at the last we have this and so I will write for unit test here okay and now here I have here this first dependency which is the find one select then the bgrip.compare so these are and then the get jw token which is also a dependency okay so now in this video let's first of all handle the validation error like missing email or password error okay so now let's handle this case uh, uh, in this video write write unit test for this case okay so simply go back and actually um i will close this describe from here and type here describe and in that i will simply type here login user okay and then i will pass here an empty callback function and in that i will write my first unit test for login user so i will type here it should throw missing email or password error okay so that is going to be an async callback okay and then that i have to first of all uh, use this mock um a request and the mock response so i will simply type here mock mock request that is going to be mock request and we know that we don't have to pass anything in the body so i will use here dot body is equal to um oops where is dot body um that is going to be body which is the empty object okay then i will type here const mock res i will type here mock response okay 
and then I have to call the login user. So I type here await login user, pass in here the mock request and then the mock response and I think that it is imported. Yes, it is imported here. Okay, and then uh, why I have imported this one. Okay, so now it will basically throw that error. So now I will simply type here copy and expect from here. So it will definitely uh, throw the 400 status code, uh, but the error message is going to be this. Copy it from here and then this. Okay, simply save this one. Now the test is passing for this um, uh, unit test basically. So again, we simply have just type here uh, empty body. We call the login user, pass the request and response. Then we have expected that the status is called with 400 status code and the mock.json has been called with this object that contains an error, which is this one. Okay, so uh, the test is passing successfully. So in my next video, I will basically write the unit test for uh, this case and for this case. Okay, so I will see you in the next lecture. Okay, so welcome back to this course. So in our previous video, you successfully written the test for this case. Now let's handle this invalid email or password if user doesn't exist with that email uh, in the database. Okay, for that I simply have to actually uh, mock this user or find one. Okay, then user did find one will actually throw the null that user doesn't exist and it will throw this error. Okay, so I will simply um, type here another it block and let me actually close this describe block here. And after this it, I type here that it should throw invalid email or password error. Okay, then async I will simply type here that just dot spy on and have to spy on onto the user and user has this find one method and I will give here dot mock implementation once okay and now here actually if I go back just to show you that here we are using this find one and we are passing the email in that and then we are also using here dot select method in here because if I go to my model um, I have used here select false so by default the password will not come if if we get the user from the database okay so to select that here we have to use here dot select and type the name of the field which is the password okay so ag again here we are using the function chaining and before that we have handled that in this way uh, we have used uh, here sorry we have used here this mock written this and there is one more way to handle that which is this one we will simply use here mock implementation once okay and then we will simply return from here an object that contains that function that is select okay and that select will be the mock function that will basically mock resolve value once that will resolve and give back the null okay so now this part will throw the uh, which one and this one it will throw the null and we will get this error okay so again we can simply give the mock implementation once here we can return the object that contains that select method and that select method will basically uh, 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 mock resolve this null value okay and now we have to actually send the request so I simply copy this from here put that here and now in the body we have to actually pass the uh, login info and for the login info I simply create here const user login that contain the email and the password so I simply copy this email and password and put that here okay then I will type here that the body uh, will be user login. Okay, so now we will pass the email and the password and the body of the request, and then we have to expect that we get here invalid email or password. So I simply copy this from here and put that here, and the test will definitely fail. 
and you can see that it is failed. So now we have expected here for uh, 400, but it we get back here 401 because we have set here uh, 401. So I simply type here 401, okay, and then it will fail again because now we have received here invalid email or password. So I simply copy that from here and put that here, and now the test will pass because we have successfully handled that, okay. So now moving on next, we have here this part if the password is invalid. So we will we have used here bgrip.compare that will basically compare both passwords. So we have to also mock this bgrip.compare. Okay. So what I'll do is I will simply actually copy this entire function, this entire it block, and just reuse that. So it will throw the invalid password error, and that is actually invalid email error. Okay. And then uh, I will simply um, here return the mock user because now the user will exist. We don't have to throw here now. We have to throw the user. So we will return. Uh, we will uh, pass here mock user. Then we also have to uh, mock the speak rip dot compare. Okay. So I will simply type here just dot spy on. We will spy on on the B script. And the method is compare okay then mock um, the resolved value once in that I will pass here false because uh, this compare will return true if the password matches and false if password doesn't match so in that case we have to fail that we have to pass here false because we have to handle this part okay so now the bgroup.compare will throw the false and we will get this error message okay I simply save this one and now the test will pass. Okay, you can see that here the test is passing successfully because in this case also we are um, giving the same error here which is uh, right here. Okay, so now we have handled both cases. Uh, in my next video, I will handle the last case which is the uh, this one. We will create a token and then we have to make sure that the user is logged in successfully. Okay, so I will handle that in my next video. Okay, so welcome back to this course. So now let's test our jobs controller in this section. So first of all, in this video, let's create our mocks uh, in our testing file. And from the next video, we will write our first unit test. Okay, so I simply go to uh, the controllers and create a new file here that is jobs controller dot spec dot js. Okay, and now here, first of all, I close this one and first of all I import here the jobs model from dot dot slash models then slash the jobs model okay and then uh, we actually need to create here first of all mock job okay that will contain the uh, dummy data of job so I go back to my postman and before that I have to actually start my server so I type here npm run dev and then I simply send the request to this endpoint send and um, I will use this as dummy data copy that from here and I put that in the mock job okay so you can create that uh, if you want and I will also uh, add this uh, object in the description or the resource of this video so simply go to the resource of this video and download that if you don't want to write by yourself okay so here I have a mock job that contains a dummy job. Uh, so after that I need here mock request and mock response. Okay. So I create here mock request and that is going will definitely return an object. Now in the request first of all we need body. Okay. And then if I go back you can see that we need here request.query. Then we need here request.body okay and then here all we also need request dot params also in here we need here request dot user so I first of all add the body then let's add here the query okay and then add here the params object and then also at the end add here the user object so this is our mock request that contain all for uh, these uh, basically values and after that we need here mock response that contains status and JSON uh, function so I simply type here const mock 
response and that will also return an object so return and then I type here the status so that is just dot fn which is the mock function and then that will simply mock return this mock return this okay and which is simply uh, return itself okay and now we have also json that is just dot fn dot mock resolve uh, sorry mock return this okay so now it will handle uh, this part which is the uh, rest dot status dot json and then after that we have successfully created our mock job mock request mock response and let's actually also type here after each we need to clear our mocks so simply type here restore the spy created with spy on okay then that is just dot restore all mocks okay simply save this one so now our mocks are ready in my next video i will create my first unit test and we will test this first function which is the get jobs okay so i will see you in the next lecture okay so now let's test this get jobs controller so first of all let's see what this function do um first of all we have here the uh, res per page that is two uh, this is basically for pagination that means how many results we want to display per page you can see that here we only have here two results on the first page and then we have here current page number by default it is going to be one and if user pass the, uh, the page in the query then we will use that okay and then we also have to calculate that if for example if we want to go to page number two then we have to skip the first two results okay so this is a skip variable that will contain those so we will simply uh, multiply the test per page with the current page minus one for example we are on page two so the current page will be 2 so 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 so 1 multiplied by res per page which is 2 we will get here 2 so it will skip first two results and give the uh, third and the fourth result on the second page so in this way the skip will work and then I have here the uh, keyword it will basically check that if we have keyword in the query then we will uh, check that otherwise it will return an empty object okay and if the user pass the keyword then we will search that keyword in the title of the job okay so i will simply search here the title field and then i will use here regular expression so that it doesn't match exactly with the title so that's why i will use here adjects and pass the keyword in that and then i have passed here the options and i means that the search is case insensitive okay then we will spread this keyword here and it will search uh, all the jobs with that keyword okay we also have to apply the pagination so i will use here dot limit that i want to only limit means that how many results you want to display per page so i will pass here res per page so it will only display two results per page and then it will skip uh, the number of results based on this value so these two are the mongoose function we also need to mock them and then we will simply return the jobs okay now let's first of all go back to our postman if i click on send you will see that we get back our results and if i type here like i want to only get here node job i think i have uh, so you can see that we here have here php and node so simply type here in the keyword that i want to only get the job with php keyword so if i click on send you can see that i get here only one job with the php in the title in the same way i can pass here the page number like page two now it will display nothing because i have only two jobs in the database if i type here um, one then it will display the first two jobs okay so in this way uh, this function will work so now let's uh, write unit test uh, for this function so here first of all we have the find dependency and this find limit and the skip we have to mock all these okay and also we have to pass the request and response as always in the controller function so I simply go back now let's write here our first unit test for the jobs controller so I describe here jobs controller okay so this is small o and then in that um, let's create another describe doc here because I want to uh, group uh, the unit test for each controller function because you have to write multiple uh, tests here so I will simply type another describe here um, describe 
and this describe is for the get all job so in that we will group all the tests related to the get all job in this case we have only one and now it should um, get all jobs now this is optional you can also put all tests in one describe but I will keep it separate okay then this is going to be async okay so now that first of all we have to mock these dependencies so first of all we have here find then we have limit and then we have skip so here the functions are chaining okay so to handle that I will simply go back and just type here just dot spy on I will spy on on the job model okay and then the function is going to be find then mock implementation once and in that I will simply return an object that will contain this function which is the limit okay then I type here limit now we know that after limit we have one more function that is skip that is chaining after that so we have to again return from here a function with this object and in that we will simply type here the skip which is the last uh, function here so skip just dot fn that will create an empty mock function and then I will use here um, dot mock resolve value okay so now we know that this part will return an array of all the jobs so I will simply return here an array that contain this mock job okay so it will return this mock job in an array all right and then um, actually we also have to type here this and then um, let's type here also okay uh, I think so here yes so you can see that first of all we have here find limit and skip function that are chaining so we will simply give the mock implementation once to this job dot find that will return an object with this property with this function that is limit then will also that will also return an object with the skip that contains the mock implementation that will basically uh, mock resolve this, this value which is an array of the mock job okay so now we have successfully mocked out all the dependencies now let's call our function and um, before that we have to get here mock request okay so oops that is mock uh, request that will contain the mock request okay then we pass here the mock response and that is request actually okay mock response okay and then after that I will simply call here the get jobs on the controller you can see that here and then I will pass here the mock request and then the mock response and let's save it and run our testing file so I simply type here npm run test so it will run all the tests I will simply filter out the file made by typing here p and then the jobs controller dot spec dot js so you can see that the test is passing at this moment but we have to also write here assertions so first of all we can, we can expect here that um, if uh, the uh, result is successful then we get back here 200 status code and the JSON will contain the jobs array okay so we can simply test that like expect the mock response dot JSON dot to have been called with 200 so it is called with 200 okay so now we get here expected 200 but receive this jobs array okay so that is um, the status simply save it now test is passing and the same way I can simply expect that mock um, response dot json dot to have been called with and it has been called with this 
job property that contains an array of mock job like this okay if i simply save this one um the test is passing because we get here this data and uh, okay so that is jobs simply save it and now the test is passing so in this way we can basically test our uh, this function you can see that i hope that you understand if you have any confusion let to do this uh you're not testing you definitely ask me a question i am always here to help you so that's it for this video in my next video i will test my next controller function that is create a job okay so welcome back so now let's test our second controller function that is the new job so in this we are basically uh, passing the request dot body in the create function that we create the job and return that like here okay and we also have to add the user id in the body of this uh, basically request dot body we will also set the user here okay and that is actually 201 not 200 because this object is created so simply save this one and now let's write our unit test so I simply go back now i will simply add here my own describe block so describe okay and that will contain here the create new job okay now in this describe i will write all the tests related to this uh, create new job first of all we have here it uh, should create a new job that is going to be async and then that first of all we have to mock the uh, create we only have here one dependency or function that is create so we have to mock that and i will simply type here just dot spy on i will spy on to this model so that is the job okay and then the function is create that will mock resolved value once and now we know that whenever we create a job we get back the object so i will pass here the mock job okay so now it will return this mock job now we have mocked our dependency now let's uh, send the request and first of all i will type here mock request we'll call here mock request now in that we have to pass here the request dot body and the also we have to set the user so we have to actually pass uh, the uh, details of the job in the body so i will simply type here dot body and then here i will set the body first of all and then also i have to set here the user we know that we also have to uh, pass here request dot user dot id so i will type here user then the id of that user and let's copy that user id i will copy this one put that here and now for the job i will copy this because we don't have to pass here id it will be created automatically by the mongoose so we will pass here uh, this part only so i copy that and i paste that here and i also need a title description email address company let's move the industry also from here positions and then the salary okay now we have passed uh, now we have set the uh, body and then the user now let's create our uh, mock re response so mock res is equal to mock response now let's call our function so await that is new job actually new job in that i will pass the uh, mock request and the mock uh, response like this okay and now um, i have to write my assertion here so i will simply type here that expect mock res dot status dot to have been called with 201 if i press command s here you can see that the test is passing if i type here 200 you can see that the test is failing because you get back 200 201 sorry okay and also if i log here the mock request just to show you um, simply log here you can see that and now in the request we have here this body that contain uh, this uh, jobs data and then the user that contain this id and i have also removed uh, this part which is the uh, posting date and then the industry because if i go back to my model you can see that uh, it has it is not required um 
or it is it is created automatically with this uh, default value okay so that's why you don't have pass the posting date and then the uh, industry oh sorry uh, yes industry i think so okay so now we have successfully actually we also have to write one more assertion here so i will first of all remove this one simply call that that expect a mock res dot json dot to have been called with now it should be called with this job field and then the mock is going to be mock job okay so now the test will pass simply save this one and now our test is passing successfully here okay so in this way we can test our uh, create a new job uh, controller function so in my next video i will write my second unit test for this uh, uh, function which is for this validation error okay so i will see you in the next lecture